my dear viewers, to last episode of the season number three. In this episode, I'm in unknown forest for me. In this forest is a lot of wild animals, including wolves. Wow. <laughs> so, this will be interesting. And I forgot my shelter at home. And I need to figure out how to survive a night. So stay with me, watch the video, and you will know how I survive the night in this danger forest. <laughs> so, enjoy the episode. Peace! Welcome, my friends, to your so much love and super duper interesting documentary series, Impulse. It's quite beautiful forest. In some places it's quite dense too. There is a road about one kilometer from here. There are also some houses nearby. You can hear the dogs barking. But this forest is amazing. Yeah, it's quite dense and a lot of mosquitoes and other insects are here. But I have bug spray with me, so at the moment I'm fine. But I don't have any mesh to protect myself like I had on previous episode. In this episode I have only sleeping bag, sleeping mat and the ground sheet for my tent. That's it. As you can see over there, also here and there, these are old marks from the wild pigs. They are doing stuff like this with the moss. They are looking for food. I think I'm gonna stay here. It's actually very hard to find place over here. I already found one place over there, but then I looked up and I saw two dead trees, potentially deadly. One of them was quite big. So, like I said, in this episode, I'm intentionally left my shelter at home. I want to play out the situation 
when you are going to camp and you forgot your tent. There is some options you can do. You can create your own shelter from the things that are laying around, some branches, some wood, whatever you can find. So I need to check what I have. In this area is a lot of trees that I can use to make my shelter. But in my case, I have a ground sheet with me. My ground sheet is always in separate section of the bag. I keep it on the lower part of the bag where should be the rain cover. So I have my ground sheet. Normally I have one ground sheet, desert fox. So the option is I can make a lean-to or make some roof or maybe something in between. But I also have this Tyvex. Tyvex is very lightweight. Sometimes I'm taking this also with me, especially in winter, when I'm laying the Tyvex on a vestibule. And of course, normally I would have just one, but since I have very fragile, super duper, ultra light mattress, I don't wanna puncture it over here. <laughs> so that's why I'm using my Tyvex as a ground sheet and my ground sheet as my shelter this time, okay? Getting dark now, this forest is quite thick and not too much light in here, so I need to be fast. So one more thing I'm gonna need. I need the tent pegs. A lot of branches here, I can make my own. I need at least two, it depends how I will create my shelter. Okay, let's make some tent pegs. So I have my tent pegs, my ground sheet and some rope. Of course you can use your shoelaces or find another way to secure your shelter. This specific ground sheet have these holes. It would be nice to stake them down through these holes, but these are quite big tent stakes. I can find some thinner, but they're not too strong. I'm gonna use a rope to attach them. Okay, let's do this. Since there is no wind at all, I decided to make a flying roof configuration. Also, this is meant to be a ground sheet. Those connection points are only for holding the ground sheet on place on the ground. So when I was tying it, even with a little bit pressure, two of those attachment points failed. So in this part, I placed a small pine cone inside and tightened it up like that. Ghetto style, okay. Same thing here, but I only use the ring as attachment. Let's have a look on these attachment points. So it's not too tight, and that's good. But if wind pickups, I need to change th these attachment points to some pine cones. So what about this last one? It's still okay. Okay, that's good. So that's my shelter, flying groove. So good visibility. 360 around that's good so let's go place the rest of the gear inside the new shelter uh, need to take out all the sharp objects because I have my summer mat and it's very delicate Always check for ants. <laughs> like you remember in one episode I made my top tent and there were ants. <laughs> of course you can clean area very clean that there is no sharp objects and then place your mat. But in my case I will use this Tyvex. I think like this.
done. So next on the list is to make something to eat. Welcome, my dear viewers, to your so much loved and super duper interesting documentary series Impulse. So, I'm gonna enjoy my meal, maybe you enjoy yours. Bon appetit! Wow, it's hot, but awesome. <laughs> mm. That's the bomb. It's only oats, sugar and water. <laughs> Welcome, my dear viewers, to your so much love and super duper interesting documentary series, Impulse. After I've done with my porridge, I will go to my shelter to have a little bit chill and then make some tea and enjoy this beautiful forest. Okay. So I'm chilling and I'm gonna make some tea. Enjoy the sounds of the nature. And then about midnight I will eat my dinner and then I will watch some Netflix before I go to sleep. <laughs> the mosquitoes are crazy over here. It's good that I have a spray for mosquitoes and ticks. Without that spray it wouldn't be possible to be here. <laughs> It would be a nightmare. Of course, if I had some bug net cage or, or a hammock with a bug net or a tent, no problem. But like this... Wow. <laughs> okay, see you later. Peace! So being in the nature is a wonderful thing. There is something about it. I'm still survived. <laughs> I am in between three million mosquitoes and ticks and animals. <laughs> and I forgot my tent at home, but I'm still alive. <laughs> I'll check the temperature. I think this is the highest temperature for this spring at this time of the day. It's already 10 o'clock in the evening and it's 16.25 Celsius. And humidity is 46.7%. Wow, it's quite dry. So I'm gonna check what the temperature should be at night time. So about midnight it should be 11 degrees Celsius and then temperature is dropping each hour by 1 degrees, something like that. So the lowest temperature should be around 6 degrees Celsius. So that's the good thing that I brought my autumn sleeping bag Nautilus.
20 minutes to midnight and temperature dropped to 12 and a half degrees Celsius and humidity now is 59 percent it's very quiet <laughs> and mosquitoes are gone too that's good there is no wind and weather forecast says that there will be no rain today so but if rain will come I have a roof on the top as it goes for now it's very comfortable summer is almost here so it's getting warmer and warmer it's super quiet over here I think I've never been in a forest so quiet I never heard my stove be so loud <laughs> oh my god Okay. Temperature dropped one degrees. Now it's eleven and a half degrees Celsius, and humidity is sixty-two percent. Temperature is dropping. I will have my ramen and go to sleep. Okay. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Peace. Good morning. Whoa. Welcome, my dear viewers. There's so much love and super duper interesting documentary series Impulse, the last episode of season number three. This was a wonderful night. It was quite cold night. Tonight temperature dropped to 6.4 degrees Celsius and humidity maximum was 85% I slept in all my clothes tonight was lazy style <laughs> and this is not the first time that I found that I actually feel warmer if I sleep only in the base layer and of course I can add this fleece jacket but it but in my cotton trainers it's not so comfortable my top is synthetic and the trousers are from cotton it's not so cool also this base layer is some kind of sportswear it's not so tight around my body so it's not so warm I start to feel a little bit cold around maybe five o'clock in the morning and then I woke up and done some jumping jacks and ate some sun seeds and add another layer for sleeping so it is time to wake up and what about the morning tea I forget my tea at home yesterday I made a tea from the sun seeds can you believe me <laughs> yes I just pour some sun seeds inside the boiling water and actually it was quite nice it's better like drinking plain water or something it had a taste and afterwards you can eat those sun seeds out with your spoon it was okay <laughs> but uh, as it goes for now of course I can go in a forest to find some some berry plants that I can make a tea but I don't have a time for that I need to go to work later on I will tell you the story about this night this night was quite interesting okay see ya peace
Dear viewers, it's a wonderful morning. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story about this night. So it was around midnight. I was eating my ramen and then I heard something like I was sitting here just eating in that direction. I heard very loud noises like somebody is very heavily going through the forest like like these no noises. I can't even show you the noise because that noise was like somebody is coming here and breaking all the possible branches on the way. My first thought was that maybe there is a, like a super small town over there and I thought maybe there is uh, somebody drunk is coming here because my my biggest fears in these forests first of all is from the people. Now for example somebody are drunk or maybe there are few people drunk and uh, I basically don't want to talk with anybody. I want to enjoy myself solo camping. Secondly, I don't want to talk with uh, drunk people. I'm not using alcohol myself. They could be uh, aggressively people. That was my biggest uh, fear to talk with somebody here at the night and explaining what I'm doing here and, uh, and stuff like that. Even if it was uh, just a drunk guy, I wouldn't be feeling comfortable to stay here in this place. In, in that way my episode would be ruined. So I switched off this lantern, I switched off my red headlamp. I was standing here nearby my shelter and just listened what happened next. Because the, the sound was, I would say around in that time, maybe maximum 200 meters from me. But to me it was like somebody is really drunk and he's like uh, falling over and going through the forest. Because this forest is quite thick and it has a, a lot of branches. You can't even move in this forest quietly. There are some places but mostly there is uh, full of the branches. It seemed that sound was going like uh, nearby me, like that. I thought, uh, okay, if you are some drunk, you just keep going to the, that direction, to your town and, and whatever. <laughs> then noises stopped. The noises was around, I would say, 10 minutes or so. Then I returned to my ramen, got inside my sleeping bag and was checking out my phone and chilling out. And then again, again those uh, noises, again somebody is going through the forest and breaking all the branches on the way. And that thing is coming to me. So I switched off my phone and then I get out from my sleeping bag and I was sitting here and listening. Not like sitting, but I was like in this position, you know. Being closer to the ground and I was listening what's happening next. But now that the sounds are on the front of me, somewhere around there. The time was around maybe one o'clock, one o'clock at the night, something like that. And there was a quite a lot of noises. Oh my God, I felt so scared. I don't know what's in there. Maybe some alien, you know, some monster, <laughs> some bear, some wolf, some male of a deer. Some drunken master <laughs> or some whatever, some prisoner. 
<laughs> I don't know who is there. The noises were coming towards me, so I decided to take my headlamp and switch it to the brightest option. My headlamp is very powerful. So I was sitting here and I made a big beam to there and there. And I don't know. I I could barely see something moving over there. Those steps were quite heavy and the thing was quite big because the, the movement of the branches was quite high. In that moment I realized that it's 100% it's it's not a human. <laughs> yeah, it sounds scary, okay? It didn't run away when I switch the light it just keep moving from from that side to there and now it was i would say 25 meters from me but since there is a lot of trees and on the way i couldn't see what is there but i saw some but something moving to that side but not really i didn't see even the outline I, i've seen that something is moving the branches and the trees i didn't see the the real body of somebody <laughs> and I heard some heavy steps, okay? So I get up and then I go on maybe one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight or nine. Eight or nine big steps. So that's my shelter and I'm about eight meters from it. My shelter is over there. I have my headlamp and I was beaming into the unknown darkness to see what's in there. Oh my god, I felt so scared and at the same time I felt quite pumped with adrenaline and I was ready to fight too. I had my knife in this pocket and I was ready to fight anyways. I was already on a different level. It was not only being scared, but it was also being able to fight if needed. You know that situation like in the movies, sometimes somebody, some woman or some guy is going inside the darkness where is some monster or whatever, just to looking, what is in there? And then you're always thinking to yourself, don't go there, don't go there, why are you going there? No, it's so scary, don't go there. And I felt the thing uh, in my mind that I am going in a darkness with a torch. There's somebody is, is breaking the branches and looking, what's in there? Who is there? <laughs> oh my God, the adrenaline was so high. But yeah, that uh, there was no sounds anymore. I don't know how it could disappear. <laughs> because he need to leave and it also should make a sound. Because this is quite thick forest and you definitely make some sounds moving through it. But it was uh, dead quiet after that. So in the morning I came to see maybe there is some signs of somebody. I will show you what I found. Come on. Welcome my friends to your so much love and super duper interesting documentary series Impulse! So I found this one so this is the fresh trace, you can see. There you can see some, some lines, like this, like this. And here you can see how far is the moss. Some animal was, was digging like powerfully there. I will measure it about how far is it? So one, two, two and something meters is this moss. This is a fresh moss. It's from from there. Okay, so also here to me it seems that somebody was sleeping here. But maybe not, but maybe yes. And actually there is the other one here. Mm. 
it seems like two places. I don't know about those ones. Maybe those are not fresh, but this is fresh. Also here are fresh marks. And again you can see the lines here. It's one line here, one here, one here. Oh my god, if it's a bear, it's like a with a I don't know. You tell me in the comments who could make these. Of course, human could make these, but there is the line. Here is a line, there is a line, and there is a line, and there is a line. One, two, four, five, six. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's a deer. Okay. Also, this is a fresh mark. Okay. So somebody was coming from that side. Also here, there's the, the fresh bites of the bark of this tree. And it's... So it's about meter height. So this one also is a fresh. As you can see, there is the marks on the on the tree bark here. So this is fresh one. And also that one is fresh one. And look how closely this is to my camp. There is my shelter. So now it's, I don't know, 20 meters actually. And about 10 meters I was standing in the middle between here and my, my shelter. So I was standing around here and look here. The thing was here. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> As you can see, it's also fresh marks on the, on the stick. And, that, and the top of the stick is, is broken. It's still, I can still feel it damp, so it's fresh. So this branch was beaten off, definitely. But I can't find any footprints. I'm not a professional, you know. <laughs> so I think it was a deer. Who knows, maybe it was some small animal making big noises. <laughs> Yeah, but this was very scary experience. I liked it and I hate it in the same time. <laughs> okay, let's finish our spring season, season number three, with this nice story. I hope you liked this episode. The next one will be in the new season, season number four, the summer season, the final season of this documentary series, Impulse. Take care, leave no trace, be good to other people and enjoy the nature. See you then on the season number four. Bye. And remember, peace. Okay, that's it. Bye!